There are so many things about life that interests me. I've always had great passions. I've wanted to know about the sea and boats. I wanted to know about gardens and this environment. I want to know about people and cultures and countries. But I can't explore everything at the same time in person. So how do I do that? For me, that cornerstone has been the library. From a young age, when I couldn't run around and kick a ball as other kids, I could hobble over to the library and find books. And books became the window to the world out there. And so it was important that I got to know what the world could be through knowledge. And that knowledge was captured by such amazing authors who could inspire me and my curiosity. Now in South Africa, our libraries were segregated. We could not go to whichever library we wanted. It was based on the color of your skin. The library I had to go to didn't have many books. It was one room with a few shelves, most of them empty. It was called a colors only library. With a whites only library was this huge building with lots and lots of shelves stacked full of every conceivable book you could imagine. That's the library I snuck into. And I stood in the aisle reading the books on nautical adventure that inspired me to eventually become a sailor. It inspired me by opening up the world of the solo yacht races the men and the women who had, back in the 1960s, raced their boats solo around the world, like my friend Robert Knox Johnson. And I can say my friend, because I read about Robert Knox Johnson as a kid. He was the first man to race solo around the world nonstop. And then years later, I got to meet him, and I got to know him, and I got to engage with him. And so the library opened up this world to me. Like right now, I love things about the garden. And so again, I can go and find books about gardening, find books about horticulture, books about permaculture. To me, the libraries and access to books is that window into the soul of humanity, to the possibilities of a world that I can participate in based on my interest. So I get very upset when I hear people say, oh, I'll never read that book, or I'll never let that author ever be in my house, uh, because of, uh, I disagree with what her politics may be, and so I'll never read her book, or I'm going to ban a book, or I'm going to burn a book. This is about limiting our world. You may choose not to read something for whatever your interests and reasons are, and that's your choice. But let's not ban things. Let's not put limitations on what can be accessible. Because you know what? You're going to lose. Because information is here. Information is present. And if you are hungry enough and you're curious enough, you will find it. And so today's world of technology is in a way replacing libraries. Because I can now go onto social media and I can listen to other people's opinions and see their videos and question the authenticity of their views and opinions because I can balance it with the books I can go and find. I can still go back to the libraries. I can still find electronic books to get much more in-depth knowledge. It's not about how broad you go. It's nice going broad and seeing diversity of opinions, but it's also nice to go deep and narrow, to really get to the meat of how do things work? How do things happen? Why are things important from the perspective of that author and that writer? I wrote Journey of Hope Merchant, my autobiography, which was quite broad, but it's a lot of work. So I come to appreciate the value of what an author goes through to bring that viewpoint. And that viewpoint, we may not always agree with, but let's be respectful. And let's be curious, because we will be a better society for all of those things. Sorry, my cat got in the wrong place.
Also, curious, nine lives. But that doesn't stop us learning. 